I'm going to talk about um, the story of open government uh, data in the city of Vienna. Um, we're looking forward to this discussion afterwards, of course. Um, well, I've been working a couple of years, last four years, for the uh, official portal for the city of Vienna. It's called uh, VNOT. Uh, you have a screenshot here. Um, you have a ton of information on that page. You have it online, uh, part of it, uh, since 1996, uh, from various uh, areas of the government uh, in Vienna, 70 departments, uh, very strong um, say city maps, a lot of traffic infrastructure uh, in uh, visualizations on the page itself. So a lot of content, but the quest question here is that uh, data, uh, we decided, well, it's, it's okay, but it's not data that you can use for other purposes. So just about a year ago, uh, the data portal was launched. Um, I'll give you uh, an overview uh, of the data portal, and before that I will talk about uh, main factors that made it possible that the data portal was launched uh, in Vienna. Number one factor is uh, various communities from the outside, outside the government, outside of the city administration, uh, were pushing for open data. Uh, to name a few, uh, we have a very active open street map community in uh, Vienna and in Austria. We have academic community that re uh, was really interested in data and we have, for example, also a very strong uh, community for, with people with disabilities regarding, for example, uh, okay, excuse me, uh, requesting data, uh, for example, broken elevators uh, for the underground so that they can um, plan which uh, station they should leave. Think of somebody sitting in a wheelchair. Um, to say it also here, because that's a topic here, one community that was missing here is the media community. The, at least uh, we didn't hear the media community demanding that kind of uh, information, uh, so it was not present in, in this process. Yes, of course, all, all the uh, people from Vienna know that we also had a new government in uh, 2010 for the first time including uh, the Green Party and of course um, we had a government agreement and in that agreement there was uh, this quote regarding open data as in international examples. We had of course Obama administration and also the activities in the UK. Um, very big factor for uh, if the quick realization of the open data portal was the city of Linz. Uh, so this was a competition between other cities that were announcing open data portals. And so it was the ambition of Vienna to be ahead. Um, also important, you have to see uh, quite a lot of number, uh, quite a lot um, of people inside the administration working for the portal. Uh, well, I don't uh, tell you all the names of the people, but you have to see it's it's quite a lot of, of people from various uh, departments. One big big uh, driving factor was, of course, technology. Here, here to mainly to name uh, the mobile revolution with the mobile phones uh, and really uh, new. Uh, use cases, uh, think of uh, the capabilities you have with a mobile phone regarding location-based services. You know where you are and you can, uh, and what, what's around you. So this is of course uh, also the app uh, economy. So the, the uh, implication from inside the government was of course many departments wanted their own app and as we mentioned before 70 departments but you, you, you can't produce 70 different apps uh, that would be kind of absurd and so it wasn't capable for the administration to do all the apps uh, by themselves. Okay here's a screenshot of the, of the portal. Um, what's the data that's available there? Um, I have translated uh, the data catalog. I have to say that the whole portal is available in German only. Uh, that's, um, of course, main target group is, of course, uh, people living in Vienna, or developers living in Vienna. Um, we have a, lo a very huge uh, amount of data coming from the aforementioned uh, city maps. So we have uh, base maps. You can build your own uh, city map of Vienna, online map. Uh, a couple of people have already produced uh, online maps that are very 
uh, fascinating and really can compare uh, and are even better than, for example, uh, commercial products. Um, you, you know them all. Um, another big, big uh, heap of, comes from statistics from various departments uh, regarding population, uh, really going down uh, to local levels where you have not just numbers for the districts, but, but the level below. So that's a, a current, um, if, you, if, if you say a district has about 50,000 inhabitants, then you have uh, down there, because then uh, next level is about, I think, 5,000 people, where you really have numbers of age, gender, uh, where they come from, etc. Infrastructure data, of course, uh, location-based, where's uh, toilets, where is uh, schools, where libraries, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's around 120 different data sets, and it's growing um, on a regular basis. It's updated uh, four times a year is now uh, the current uh, cyclus. Uh, alongside every data set, you have uh, a fact sheet, uh, the so-called metadata, uh, the data about the data, uh, which makes it uh, possible to, to understand the data that you're getting. Uh, you have multiple formats. Um, a lot of those formats are coming from the geo uh, background, so that's that uh, first one. Then, of course, uh, XML-based uh, uh, formats or JSON, etc. You have the data, where is the data coming from, how often is it updated, what's the data quality, quality? and if you take a look inside uh, the data, it's, uh, our goal is to have open formats only, so that the formats are readable by humans, you can read the uh, file, you can have a look at it, uh, but of course it's meant to be read and processed by machines. Important is always to have the direct access to the original data, and so that the data is always up to date. Um, one discussion regarding uh, the license issue was, of course, uh, on the one hand side, you have uh, the demand from the grassroots side, give us the free data now. On the other side, you have uh, the inside, often the inside view that the data is valuable and somebody who wants the data should pay for it and if you give it out for free you have to ask your own legal department so it would be a free on our terms. I can give you an example um, about previous experience we had. It's called our Geo Shop, where you could uh, download uh, some products uh, for sale some 100 euros, some are more expensive, 1000 euros and even some uh, available for free, uh, no euros. Um, the problem here, specific terms of use, you have, even for the free products, you have free products for non-commercial use, you have paid geodata products for private use and commercial use, and you have paid geodata for non-commercial use, for educational, teaching and scientific research, but of course, special rates available only on request and with a registered user. So it's really complicated, um, which led, of course, to uh, something like uh, the swimming car, a very bad uh, model, it didn't have, uh, yeah, data was not used, nobody used, downloaded the data, uh, no apps or anything else was done with it, and of course on the other hand side you still had the maintenance cost for the portal, so it was, it was not working. So what we decided uh, to give uh, all the data away under an established license, and, and that's uh, Creative Commons. It's so-called Creative Commons by attribution, so you just have to say that it's coming from the city of Vienna, and otherwise you can do with the data whatever you want. Very important here is also that you can also um, use it commercially. Um, we heard it in a talk before. Um, the whole process of the open data portal was also a process um, of change inside the administration and um, very much opening up to the audience and to the public and going into discussions. And so it was very important to have, besides just opening up a portal in, in the internet, a website, uh, also be there in real life. So we called uh, these meetings, regular meetings, uh, platforms. Um, they're free to attend. 
they are now happening once every three months, so four times a year. And you can go there and ask the people from the administration, from the various departments, what kind of data is there, what kind of data will be next, um, why is that data not available, and so on. Uh, we have a very active community around uh, the Open Data Portal. Um, most of the participants come from uh, developer background. So they are actually people using the data, creating something with the data, making visualiza visualizations or uh, creating apps. Um, we, so far we have not uh, very active uh, engagement from the media community. The benefits to round it up, on one side, of course, uh, citizen engagement. We have over 30 apps that have been created. You can find them on the portal. It's data wiengvat slash apps, where they are uh, presented. A lot of apps uh, are for mobile phones. We have for the various platforms, uh, location-based, what's around me, infrastructure around me, where is the next hospital, where's the next police station, etc. You have visuals for the uh, budget data we re also released, um, and a lot of data uh, visualizations with the map uh, the maps that are available. Inside the administration, it's important to see uh, the opening up as a chance to get feedback on the data and to re uh, improve the data inside the administration, and also to see uh, where's the data available inside the administration in various departments so that uh, the data can be managed in a, in a more efficient way. Regarding data requests, um, this is of course meant for the data that has been released. It's not, uh, uh, well, we can talk about that per later in the discussion, uh, how critical the data already is. Um, here's the benefit for the inside administration is of course that you don't have to answer individual requests, but you can point to the official data uh, that has been released to the public data. And often you have, uh, APIs where you can have a real-time connection to the data and you have, can always have the data up, that's up to date. Um, one benefit of the whole process was there's a corporation, uh, Open Government Data Austria, so there is a, a very active community that has established itself inside the various uh, governmental bodies in, in Austria working together on uh, the same standards and the same uh, publishing uh, models. And to, to come to the end, um, my input for the discussion later, for the media message, uh, first of all, engage. Go to the meetings, go to the platform meetings, um, request the data that you want to have. Um, one could also think about um, think about press release, you have a press release, re request the open data. There's a press conference, a lot of uh, press conferences talk about some data that has been released, that has been uh, used inside the, the organization. There is a little demand, uh, it has to be repeated all the time, open up the data, give that data to the public. Um, and of course, we had a very positive media coverage. We had uh, hundred, literally hundreds of articles regarding the launch and all the opening up of the data, but we had so far uh, very few uh, uses inside the media. The media didn't uh, take the data, didn't use uh, any of the data so far. Okay. Thanks.